Hey, I've got a question, or a question rather for many people, about how to manage carb cravings. And I'm doing the video today. There's a lot of noise in the background because it's a Sunday and everyone's having a good time. But I wanted to get this out there. Saying what to do about carb cravings is kind of like saying looking at a play when it's come out on stage and all the people are out watching the play, saying why don't the people know their lines or why isn't the play successful? You need to go back to the back door and look at what's happening at the back end of the production. First and foremost, carbs are absolutely essential for good health. We can't have muscular growth. We can't have a brain operating appropriately. We can't feel happiness without carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are really in many ways the mainstay of our diet and the mainstay of our mental health, our happiness. In Western society, so saying that, carbs are essential. In Western society, we've kind of gone carb crazy. So we've taken what we need in our diet and we have gone crazy with it. We've also gone crazy with convenience. We've gone crazy on buying stuff. We've gone crazy on beauty and the perception of beauty. So we've kind of gone crazy in a few areas. One of the areas is eating carbs. So we have in restaurants, we have everything has sugar and salt and trans fats added to it because our taste buds have been so manipulated by the media and what we've fed them that we no longer appreciate food for the taste of food. It's raw, beautiful, unadulterated taste. So... Yes, we need carbs. Yes, we have gone carb, carb crazy in Western society. So what do we do about that? How do we manage that? Essentially, we go back to the start of the story. Why are you craving carbs? Alcohol. If you're drinking alcohol, your glycogen index or your sugar levels are going to be severely affected for at least two days, absolute minimum. Because alcohol affects our blood sugar so that we're not as able to know when we are truly hungry for a um, need for food or whether we're responding to what alcohol has done to our blood sugar. That's number one. Two, are you eating regularly? I recommend eating about once every two hours, small meals. Hunger can be a sign of uh, the body needing food. So you need to listen to that. Hunger can also be a sign of stress. Hunger can also be a sign of thirst. Are you drinking lots of fluid? I really think it goes back to how still you are, how satisfied you are in your life, unattached from the whirlwind of Western society. We know that we need a certain amount of protein. We know that. We know that we need a certain amount of fat for good health. But carbohydrate varies depending on how you feel. So you have a really hard day or you have a conflict with someone or if you don't sleep, your need for carbohydrate is going to go up and you need to respond to the body's physical need for health. But saying that, if you have something like fish and chips or sugary lollies or um, processed foods, your body is going to be all confused and it's going to think because its GI level is going to go up. It's going to think that it needs carbohydrates and it doesn't. So have a look at your patterns, not only of eating, have a look at your patterns of feeling. Are you meditating regularly? Meditation reduces our hunger. Meditation gives us a status quo, a more of an even feeling. And what carbohydrates are you choosing to eat? What's your breakfast? A full grain porridge is a fantastic slow release breakfast. Or stick a sweet potato in the oven covered in foil, that's a great breakfast. Maybe some brown rice, that's a great breakfast. Remember, cereals generally don't come in a box unless they're full grains in a box. 
all the cereals like cornflakes, wheat bix, etc., are processed. And therefore, when they're processed, the GI level goes up. So yes, give cereals to children, but adults generally not. You need the full grain, the slow release. So porridge for breakfast. Um, try and avoid cereals. Fruit is an important, essential part of our diet. Fruit has fructose in it, so it's high in sugar. So it can take your GI levels right up. It's a good food. It is a good food. But we need those cereals. We need those slow release foods. So look at the patterns in your life. Are you happy? Are you eating regularly? Are you exercising to lower your blood sugar slightly? You want to keep it at an even keel. You don't want it too low. You don't want it too high. Are you drinking loads of water? Are you sleeping? Do you have an issue that you're worrying about? If you have an issue that you have not resolved, so you feel frustrated and you don't know, will I go this way or will I go this way? Your need for food may be a way of triangulating or a way of you coping with the issue. So put the carbs away and cope with the issue. What our society has done is it uses carbs now as a way of coping with life. So that doesn't mean we resolve the issue. All it means is that we eat a lot of carbs and then we don't necessarily feel good. I want to reinforce this again because this is important. In America and in Australia, there have been deaths from people that have lowered their carbohydrates too much. And simultaneously, we know that we have gone carb crazy. So we need to find the middle line where we eat regularly. We have quality, quality carbs, not processed foods. We eat for happiness. Without carbs, you cannot think. You cannot put sentences together in your mind. You cannot feel happiness. You cannot feel happiness without carbohydrate. What carbohydrates are you eating? If you have a carb craving, look at the pattern the last few days. Have you had a problem you're not resolving? Have you stopped your meditation? Have you stopped your yoga? There's some great yoga poses that reduce hunger. Doing yoga consistently reduces hunger. Remember, hunger essentially, instinctively, is a way of the body looking after itself. It's alarm bell. Alarm, alarm, look after me. Remember me, I'm the body. Okay, so when you look at carb cravings, remember you're looking at a play and you want to go to the back door and look at how the production has been put on. How has the production been prepared? Look at the back door workings there rather than I'm going to diet. I'm going to look at the food in front of me now and try not to eat much. Forget quantity. Forget dieting. Go back to the back door. What preparation are you putting into your life? What are you doing to minimize the damage that Western society is doing to you? What are you doing to prepare your foods? What are you doing to eat regularly? What sort of people are you associating with? Are you minimizing your uh, involvement with the media that tells you to go out, go out right now and buy a chocolate or go to a convenience store right this moment? You can do it. You can do this yourself. So do you crave carbs? Sit down. Take five minutes. Meditate. Tell yourself why are you craving and then resolve it yourself. You can do it. And please feel free to send me questions because I love hearing from you. And um, don't forget you can support me at Patreon if you want to. And you can do it. You can do this yourself. I believe in you.